Welcome back to another fabulous episode of the Reckless French Garage. We got the Dana 70 pulled out from underneath the Suburban so we can get some more work done on it. We're going to be finishing up welding all the brackets and tabs on the axle. After that, we're going to pull out the differential. And due to a limited availability of lockers for the Dana 70 HD, we're going to make our own Reckless Wrench style. After that, we're going to freshen it up with a master overhaul kit from Yukon Deer and Axle. Put on this nice, beefy, hardcore differential cover. To wrap up the axle, we're going to be doing a disc brake conversion with this kit from Rough Stuff Specialties. Not only is it going to provide us better braking power, but we're also going to shave over 100 pounds of fat off of this thing. Stick around. Let's get to it. Confucius say, to rebuild something, you must first take it apart. We're going to start by getting the axle shaft out, remove the hub and the drum assembly, get all the brakes off of there. So we got our drain pan in position. Dun, 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 dun. And there's exactly why you want a drain pan handy. A single snap ring on the outside. Get that out of the way. And you have a key. Oh, that you're gonna take out, like such. I've always been told to use the right tool for the job, but in this case, I don't have the correct the I don't have the correct tool. So we're going to make do. Hopefully I'll have the correct tool by the time uh, I go to install it. So as I mentioned before, part of the reason for doing the brake swap is better braking power. The drums are alright, they work for a heavy vehicle, but they still lack a little bit of that stopping ability. On the dually axle, you'll shave over 100 pounds by switching to the disc brakes. And just because I am who I am and I like to confirm these things, we're going to weigh the factory drum setup to the disc brake setup using our, once again, handy dandy bathroom scale. The drum itself is weighing in at 42 pounds. We get the shoe set up on there. And we are at 67 pounds. Let's see if the cable is going to make a difference. Yep. We're at 68 pounds. So do your math, multiply that times two. Our disc brake kit with the bracket, the caliper, the pads, and the disc. And stack this up on here somewhere. Comes in at 33 pounds for one side. So the brakes are all off, axle's cleaned up. We would start rebuilding it now, but instead, I'm gonna work a little backwards and paint it.
Whoopsie. There we go. We're good. My bad. If only the smell of this axle would transfer through the internet. We got the carrier taken apart. It's very nasty. It all smells pretty burnt up. The bearings are pretty much toast that were in it. The master overhaul kit from Yukon. It has everything that we need. New ring gear bolts, bearings, races. There's some shims in there as well. When you pull off your uh, shims, it helps mark them. So ring gear side, obviously those are the shims that are gonna go on the ring gear side and then away from the ring gear over there. Once we clean them up, we're gonna measure them, build new shim stacks with the new parts from Yukon, and start throwing it back together. So we've been going at this for about 10 hours or so, just cleaning and disassembling and cleaning. It's really disgusting. I wanted to show you guys. I'm pretty sure that differential was a toilet. It was pretty nasty. The housing was disgusting. It took a mix of gasoline and brake cleaner to get the majority of the stuff out. But we got it clean enough. We got the carrier cleaned up. Right now I'm going to start getting the spider gears prepped for welding. So as we mentioned, with the lack of locker options available for the 70HD, for now we're just going to go ahead and weld it up. Now some of you may wonder, is there a right or wrong way to weld a diff? Well, let's be honest. If you're going to weld your diff, are you really worried about right or wrong way? If it holds, it's right. If it doesn't hold, it's wrong. Only thing you want to make sure is any of your surfaces, where your ring gear goes or where your bearings go, or where your axles slide in, you want to make sure that those are protected. Put something on there to keep spatter from sticking to it, or you know, cover it up. That's about the only uh, good bit of advice that anybody could offer for welding a diff. So I went through, I had everything in place and I tacked all the spider gears together. Pulled the pin back out. This is going to allow me to go around and weld it a little bit more. Well, and that's pretty much it. Got it all welded up. Good contact everywhere. Look at it some more and see if there's anything else I want to hit. We're going to do similar to what we did the last time. We're going to start off with the same shim stack that was in here factory. Uh, we can't make setup bearings on this one because the bearings that were on here are a little too worn out. We reinstalled the carrier, checked backlash, we're good. So we're gonna check the pattern now. If all checks out good, we're gonna uh, finish putting this thing back together. Let me Bob Ross my 
my gears real quick. Put a little happy mud puddle right here. That'll be our little secret. Installing the rotor on the back of the hub, not very difficult. Let's go ahead and take the rotor, line it up, put all your lug studs back into place. You can either put the lug nut on the other side and tighten them down, hit them down from the back, use a press, however you feel comfortable. I like to hit things with hammers. Caliper bracket, pretty easy to install. Once you pull your drum brake setup off, the same four bolts that hold your backing plate on is what, how you're gonna mount your caliper bracket. So put it, that in whatever position you want it. Oh, oops. And you slide that into place. Install in reverse order. Ta da! Last thing we need to do for the brake install is install the brake line tabs. I've already marked out where I want them. All you have to do, keep in mind wherever the brake line runs, you want the, the least risk for rocks hitting it. You don't want to get it pinched in between you know, bump stops, coilovers, anything like that. And you want enough slack on this to pull your caliper off later. There we go, another axle down, thanks to Yukon for providing us with some more parts. We got it uh, rebuilt, we got the disc brakes on, Lincoln locker, check. I think, uh, I think we're almost done. Well, we still have this big hole in the floor, so. <laughs> if you guys like this video, hit that like button. To see the Suburban leave the driveway on its own power, hit the subscribe button, because that's coming up next. Axles are done. Suspension's done. We're about ready to rock. So stick around, guys. Thanks for watching. Hang out.